about what happened with Reince Priebus and the FBI. Who initiated the phone call between uh, Reince and the FBI? So what happened is there was a meeting here at the White House a couple weeks ago to discuss an intelligence matter. At the end of the intelligence matter, the deputy director of the FBI approached Reince. He'd never met him before prior to the meeting. He said, may I talk to you privately? Explained to Reince that the story that had just come out in the New York Times talking about frequent contacts between the Trump campaign uh, and Russian officials was it was not accurate, was grossly overstated, and he wanted him to know that. Uh, to which Reince replied, great, let's set the record straight. Um, the deputy director at the time said, I'll get back to you, and then called him back a few hours later and said that they chose, they didn't want to get in the process or the habit of refuting various stories that would set a bad precedent. Uh, Reince said, well, this is kind of weird. You've now presented me with information, and we'd like to clear our name uh, because there were some serious and substantial charges made by the New York Times. Uh, so then they said, after a conversation with then Director Comey, uh, that we could say with confidence that we had been briefed and, in fact, that the Times story was inaccurate and grossly overstated. Okay. Was Reince Priebus within the bounds of his job in asking the FBI to push back on no, no, what no. he believed was an inaccurate story? Well, again, remember, he didn't ask them to push back in, in the sense that they came to us and said the story in the New York Times is false and grossly misstated. We said, great, could you set the record straight? It is ironic to me that the media, um, who we were trying to help get the information and get the story straight, after being falsely maligned with blind sources by the New York Times, we tried to set the record straight, and now the rest of the mainstream media is attacking us for trying to actually help get the story straight. And then with the gaggle that happened after right. all of this, you know, there is a claim that the New York Times was exempted almost in yeah. retaliation. So what, what the New York Times this. doesn't want to tell you, the, the pool, which is a representation of all the different kind of outlets, there's print, online, radio, television, it rotates every day. They were not part of the pool to... That's what they don't want to tell you. So the fact of the matter is that the Associated Press, the Wires, and a couple of the other papers were part of the pool. They came and they were doing, we expanded the pool to allow some additional outlets to come into the gaggle. And I think any assertion that they were banned or whatever is completely ridiculous. So this what is, you're saying is, is a, the gaggle was just an expansion of the pool. That's right. And not an elimination of the no, press. No, there, there was a, they, there is a pool that is set up by the White House Correspondents Association that is representation, TV, radio, and it rotates daily who's in that pool. They tell us who's in the pool. We don't tell them. And at the end, what we did is we chose to have a gaggle and invite some additional members of the media to come and be part of it, which we have every right to do. So John Boehner this week says he doesn't believe Obamacare is going to be repealed or replaced. First of all, is he wrong? And why is he even getting involved? Well, everyone's got a right to their opinion. <laughs> uh, but I think the president's been very clear that he is going to repeal and replace Obamacare and replace it with something that's more affordable and gives... Uh, the American people more access. You know, when you look at a state like Arizona where premium has gone up 112 um, percent and you look at the amount of choice or lack thereof that people have, you realize that Obamacare is collapsing on its own. Yeah, but, but, but the problem is that the Pew poll is showing that now the numbers in support of Obamacare right, are and I think, I think percent. Right. I think that it's incumbent upon us to continue to remind the American people what's gone on. They were promised an Affordable Care Act and nothing close to that is what they got. Um, and this is something the president was very clear on during the campaign. Uh, their premiums are going up. The amount of choice that they have has gone down. And we've got to make sure that we fulfill the president's uh, vision, agenda, and promise to the American people to give them the health care options and, and prices that they were promised. Okay, let's talk about immigration. Now, uh, the numbers seem to indicate that President Obama uh, deported a significant number of illegal immigrants, and President Trump is doing the same thing to keep Americans safe. Why is President Trump getting all the pushback? Well, I, I don't think, uh, I think President Obama uh, didn't get the pushback from the American people. Number one, he, he also used a different set of accounting. Uh, they got credit for people at the border that they turned away. This president is actually addressing the real problem that America faces. Uh, but again, it's another promise and pledge that he made to the American people on the campaign trail, specifically that people who pose a threat to our public safety and our way of life or have a criminal record would be first and foremost the ones on his list uh, to be deported. He's 100% falling through there. 
during the Obama administration, the Immigration and Customs Enforcement uh, w was had their hands tied. The Obama administration had one carve out after another, one exemption after another for people that they couldn't go after. This president recognized, in the interest of not only our national security but our economic security, that we were going to untie the hands of our ICE and Customs and Border Patrol officers who there every day trying to control the border and enforce the mission that they sought to do, uh, and he's letting them do their job. Well, is it a fact that President Obama did in fact deport more illegal immigrants than any president before him? I think the way they counted it, How sure. Do you count it? But, you but, but again, no, 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 because under before President Obama, you had you actually counted people that were in this country and that were removed from this country because they weren't here legally. What happened under the Obama administration is they changed the way in which they counted deportation. Meaning, if you approached the border and you were turned away, that's that was counted as a deportation. Counted, deportation. Well, wasn't that so a catch drove, and release? So it was. It was basically you didn't even have to come over the border to be counted as being deported if you tried to enter. So the they country, played with the numbers. They did. Yes. Okay. Please. Okay, so what time do you get up? Uh, right just before six. Yeah. And what time do you see the president most days? Uh, somewhere between nine and ten. Is he still in his pajamas? Does he sleep in the Oval Office? Uh, I, he, I, I've never seen him. He is working nonstop. I know he is. That's why I'm asking is, he you. Is, he is um, trying to keep up with him is an impossible task. His commitment to making this country better, protecting it, growing jobs is, is unwavering. And I think uh, he makes all of us uh, really, really uh, become inspired to do our best to fulfill his agenda. And when you relax, what do you do? I haven't relaxed yet, so I'll tell you when that happens. Sean Spicer, thanks for allowing us yeah. to be part of your busy day. Thanks, Judge.